Welcome to the Intel Network Builders Technology vSummit series. Time now for our session on the security for a multi-hybrid cloud environment, part of the Network Platform Security and Services vSummit. Enterprise deployment models are evolving and traditional network parameters continue to shift. What new security models are emerging in this multi-hybrid cloud environment and which Intel technologies will support them? Well, to tell us more, I would like to welcome Taran Viswanathan, Enterprise Platform Solutions Architect at Intel. Hello, Taran, and thank you for joining us today. I'd like to start by asking you, you know, what are some of the relevant enterprise trends that you are seeing? Thank you so much, Kai, for having me here. Absolute pleasure. So um, there, there are a few real trends that drive, drive our business model, right? I mean, the first key trend is really cloudification. Cloud first is a key strategy for enterprise customers. And you have to understand this was not always the case, especially with traditional large enterprises that prefer to keep workloads on premise. Additionally, we are seeing security capabilities uh, now being delivered as a service and being embraced by large enterprises. Whereas in the past, entire information security infrastructure would be hosted and managed on premise. Another key trend is containerization and containerization at scale. Containers are really becoming first-class citizens within enterprise data centers and are being adopted for deployment of production-ready applications. These are no longer science experiments and have truly transformed the uh, enterprise data center to multi-cloud environments with physical and virtual applications all being critical to enabling the business. Uh, and last but not least, the, uh, the enterprise edge is also starting to evolve. Uh, we are seeing a consolidation of a multitude of workloads like uh, software-defined wide area network, uh, security, and analytics on what we refer to as a universal uh, customer premise equipment or a UCPE. Now, there's an interesting statistic. According to Gartner, 75% of enterprise-generated data will be created and processed outside the traditional data center or, or, the or in the cloud by 2025, and, and that's a big deal. So what does this mean from a security standpoint? Well, um, with a cloud-first approach, uh, what happens is there's also a fluid parameter. And, and workloads are no longer constrained by you know, the traditional enterprise boundaries. Uh, but when that happens, it is important that enterprises can continue to ensure the same level of security compliance on their applications and data, irrespective of where it resides and uh, what form factor it resides in. Uh, this includes availability of security functions that are uh, that enterprises are used to in different environments and integrated into all forms of uh, relevant orchestration systems. The ability to federate security policies across environments for seamless enforcement of these policies. And then, you know, you, you really need the availability of hardware functions that ensure that there is no degradation of service irrespective of where and how these policies are enforced. Now, according to Gartner, again, cloud security will be one of the fastest growing uh, amongst all security offerings with 33% uh, CAGR all through 2024. Now, when you, when you look at this slide, what you see is listed here are Intel technologies that work across a spectrum of these environments to ensure that, you know, enterprises have the ability to enforce security in a consistent manner. You will see software and hardware technologies that help with ensuring that there is no degradation in performance of network and security functions, capabilities that provide visibility and observability of network traffic and the overall platform posture. This will allow you know, enterprises uh, to provide ensure that the SLAs can be met. And the last but not least, you will see capabilities that enable uh, a, a hardware-based trusted execution environment. So in, in a sense, along with the transformation and the adoption of uh, cloud-first and containerization technologies by enterprises, we have to make sure that the security uh, capabilities basically um, you know, keep pace and ensure that the same level of security compliance can be met. What are some of the key security trends that you see in this overall edge to cloud landscape? So if you consider the fact that we talked about uh, containerization of applications, uh, it, it really dovetails into what is uh, the adoption of cloud native architectures. So cloud native architectures are made up of uh, cloud services such as containers, platform as a service, and microservices. 
So with the, with the rise of adoption of cloud native architecture, the need to have robust security capabilities for these environments becomes imperative. So we do not, uh, so we do see a lot of security offerings targeted towards cloud native environments from both our traditional security vendors and new upcoming ones. Some of the key elements of cloud native security are uh, very similar to the ones that we have in traditional security, right? A lot of the elements that you see are very similar. You have things like compliance management, uh, you see the need for network security that includes analysis of all network flows. Uh, you see identity and access management security, data security, and, and workload security. At the end of the day, the intent is really to enforce security policies that preserve you know, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, the three key tenets of security. Um, next, around SASE or the secure access service edge, with applications and data no longer being restricted to within the on-premise enterprise data center, like I mentioned, due to accelerated adoption of both infrastructure as a service and software as a service. You couple that with the emergence of edge computing platforms, the need for distributed security enforcement has increased in importance. Uh, SASE is really the convergence of network services like software-defined wide area network, uh, WAN optimization, along with network security services like um, cloud access security broker, firewall as a service, remote browser isolation, and zero trust and you bundle these into a single cloud-delivered service model. Now, what this also entails is the fact that you have to let set up some of these SASE POPs or points of presence. And when you set those up, you want to make sure that you're able to handle the amount of traffic that's coming in from multiple enterprises and, and to be able to scale in a manner that does that and in a manner that continues to provide security enforcement, but in a manner that does not reduce the performance, right? I mean, so re you are going to start to rely on a lot of the hardware capabilities for ensuring that you have an accelerated uh, stack and uh, you are continuing to be able to provide these services. Uh, Gartner expects that by 2024, at least 40% of the enterprises will have explicit strategies to adopt SASE, up from less than 1% at, at uh, year end 2018. A uh, SASE architecture identifies users and devices, applies policy based security, and delivers secure access to appropriate applications or data. This approach allows organizations to apply secure access no matter where the users are, where the applications reside and where the devices are located. It is pertinent to note that in, for certain use cases and customer segments, uh, like a fab floor, a factory floor, a smart retail shop where they have IoT endpoints and other compute devices that handle a lot of um, sensitive intellectual property, you need to have security close to these capabilities in order to address any latency issues. And so security functions that reside on-prem and on devices like universal CPE continue to remain relevant and important. And last but not least, um, there is the emergence of a hardened platform. With enterprise con confidential data no longer predominantly constrained to on-premise data centers, we are talking about data in untrusted environments, multi-tenant environments, and so the need for hardware-based security technologies really becomes important. Technologies such as disk and network traffic encryption, they protect the data in storage and during transmission, but data can be vulnerable to interception and tampering while used in memory. A confidential computing is a rapidly emerging usage category that protects data while it is in use in a trusted execution environment. And Taryn, you've highlighted the security trends. Now, what are some of the specific key Intel technologies in this transformation? Intel Quick Assist technology is a key technology. This has been around for a while and improves performance across applications and platforms. Uh, you would use Intel Quick Assist for symmetric cryptography, functions including cipher operations and authentication operations, public key functions that include RSA, Diffie-Hellman, and uh, ECC, compression and decompression functions that include uh, deflate and LZS, offloading crypto functions from CPU, and, and essentially, you know, if you want to scale beyond what is provided from a software standpoint from AES and I, you would really uh, look to Quick Assist as a hardware-enabled acceleration capability. Now, Quick Assist is available as, uh, as a chipset option, as a PCIe card option and a SOC option. Uh, specific enterprise use cases include um, SSL TLS acceleration, uh, secure storage, key protection, and these are used in products like IPsec, VPN gateways, load balancers, um, application delivery controllers, software defined wide area network, uh, VPN, and firewall. The next technology is software guard extensions or SGX. Now, uh, like I said, technologies such as disk and network traffic encryption, you know, they protect data and storage. Uh, they protect data during transmission. But like I mentioned earlier, they are vulnerable to interception and tampering while used in memory. 
so while we see the uh, rapidly emerging you know computational computing like i mentioned the use of a trusted execution environment is starting to gain a lot of prominence now SGX, like I said, our software card extensions is a hardware-based TEE or trusted execution environment. And it offers hardware-based memory encryption that isolates specific application code and data and memory. It also has the smallest potential attack surface amongst TEEs for uh, data centers. Uh, SGX allows user-level code to allocate private regions of memory called enclaves, which are designed to be protected from processes that are running at higher privilege levels. Uh, these enclaves can now be as large as one terabyte in our uh, next-gen platform. Azure has, uh, was the first public cloud to offer confidential computing, and their environment is really based on Intel SGX. The, uh, the last one I wanted to talk about was our um, crypto instruction sets that are coming in the third-generation Intel Xeon scalable platform, codenamed IceLake. Intel introduces new security technologies to help secure sensitive workloads. Starting with the instruction set architecture, or ISAS, as we refer to, um, Intel introduces several enhancements designed to significantly increase cryptographic performance. For public key cryptography, these instructions provide significant performance improvements for both RSA and elliptical curve cryptography. These are enhancements that are, pro there are enhancements that provide um, increased performance for AES uh, symmetric encryption. Newly added Intel SHA extensions provide significant improvements in the SHA-256 performance. Multi-buffer is another innovative and efficient technique for processing multiple independent data buffers in parallel for cryptographic algorithms. Now, in addition to these ISAs, there will also be new technologies like Intel Total Memory Encryption, Intel Platform Firmware Resilience, and Intel Software Guard Extensions, which we just discussed in the previous section. We have more sessions still to come. So what are Intel's partners going to talk about on the vSummit today? So the partners are really going to talk about the three key trends that I was referring to, uh, Secure Access Service Edge or SASE. VMware and Zscaler are going to talk about how it is that they are setting up a performant uh, SASE POP or a point of presence that is going to rely on a lot of the Intel architect uh, technologies that I referred to for acceleration capabilities, uh, both hardware and software, and how it is that they're going to set up this architecture to be able to provide a scalable and performant uh, SASE uh, deployment for pretty much any enterprise to take advantage of. In the, in the next piece, you're going to hear Palo Alto talk about their cloud native next gen firewall and how it is that they have packaged pretty much everything that they have in their current next gen firewall into a containerized product and that can be deployed within any of the uh, standard containerized environments. And last but not least, uh, you will hear a five and photonics talk about the prevalence of TLS and how it is important for you to be able to manage keys across uh, all of these uh, multitude of environments and to be able to do that in a manner that is performant and secure and how it is that they take advantage of technologies like SGX and QAT in order to be able to do that. You will also hear a five talk about uh, an acceleration card uh, that is based on Intel technologies that can be added to any standard server to be able to provide you a performant uh, web application firewall that is capable of man handling high levels of denial of service. Um, by, by just the use of this card. So uh, pretty interesting technologies that they'll be talking about and how it is that they take advantage of Intel, Intel uh, ingredients to be able to do that in a manner that's performant and secure. Tarun, thank you very much for taking part in our session today and sharing your insights on security for a multi-hybrid cloud environment. Thank you. We have three further sessions still to come as part of the Network Platform Security and Services V Summit. We have sessions on SASE with VMware and Zscaler, Secure Computing with Fortinix and F5, and on cloud native security with Palo Alto Networks. Don't miss them. But for now, thank you for watching and goodbye.